This is a mahogany English table from the second half of the 18th century, around about 1760 in date. And uh, a relatively common piece of domestic furniture which is very practical. You've got a drawer to either end and you've got a leaf which folds out to double the table in size. So you can use it for gaming or as a tea table or an occasional table. This one is a little bit unusual in that the cabinet maker has worked out a way of how to make it portable, how to make it useful for travel for an army officer or perhaps for an officer in the Navy. Now we can see the stretcher to the middle and a domestic version of this table probably wouldn't have that stretcher in the middle but it's quite important on this version to stop the legs folding. So I think what we'll do is we'll turn it upside down, we'll put it on this table, move in a little bit closer and uh, talk about the folding mechanism. So we've now got the table upside down and the first thing to do in dismantling it is to remove the stretcher bar which stops the legs folding. And if we take a little bit of a closer look we can see that uh, this bit of wood and also on the other side are likely later additions but certainly done a long time ago just to help keep the stretcher in place. If we look from above we can see the dovetailed joint that the stretcher fits into but after a bit of use it's probably become a little bit worn and popped out quite easily. So with the stretcher bar removed we can now see the dovetail and we can see that there's a bit of wear there which has come through use um, and also on the other side so those two little extra pieces of wood would certainly have helped to keep them in. Now with the stretcher bar removed we need to remove the extra leg which supports the leaf when it's opened. So I've already undone this bolt most of the way. So we've just got a little fixing bolt there which holds it in on the joint. With that out, the leg is removed and we can see the holes for the bolt to slide all the way through. We can now fold the legs. So there you can see the knuckle joint, that's a nice good view of that. And also on the other side. But of course the first question you're probably going to ask is why do the legs only fold at the knee, only halfway up the leg? Surely it'd be far more practical to have the legs either completely removable or folding much further down. Well, of course, um, this would be far more practical, but if the legs were made to fold much further down, then one set of legs would have to be set at a narrower width than the other, so that when they fold, they would fit inside the first pair of legs. They can't both fold and occupy the same space. And Secondly, this is an early campaign table, remember. They are still trying to work out the best way to do things and we're also very conscious about uh, making it look uh, as uh, close to a fashionable table of the day. Hence, we've got these lovely little uh, corner brackets in here. You wouldn't be able to have those if the legs were folding all the way down at the the bottom. But more than that, this table is very similar to a design by uh, Anthony Eckhart, which he patented in 1771. If we look at Nick Brower's uh, 
campaign furniture book. We can see an example of um, Anthony Eckhart's table here. And you can see it's very, very similar. There's a joint on the knee there. It doesn't have the extra leg to support the leaf. Perhaps it's got a long loper in there, which um, offers it some sort of support. But in Anthony Eckhart's patent, he does note that it was made to fit inside a packing case and within it, a chair. So the cabinet maker was probably thinking, well, actually, in this space, I can have a folded chair and that will fit into that space all nice and neatly. They'll look after each other and make a nice compact fitting for any sort of packing case. So this is really quite an interesting early piece of British campaign furniture. Interesting for the fact that they're still trying to work out the best way to do things. It's very, very similar in look to a domestic table. And in fact, from a distance, you probably wouldn't see these joints and you would think that it's a domestic table. But of course, with the practicality of packing down for travel. It'd be lovely to have the original packing case and uh, chair that probably came with it. But of course, that never happens. Um, it's very rare to find a complete set especially of this sort of date, 1760. And in fact, you know, it's such a great early date. We're lucky to have found a campaign table of this date at all. So to sum it up, a mahogany English campaign table, around about 1760 in date with uh, legs made to fold for travel.